What's up guys, long time no see. So, for the last two years, I've been coming into this building right here, the Chief Clarence Dixon City of Miami Police College, which is right next door to our main headquarters in downtown. Hold on a second. <sighs> which also happens to be where every morning, the academy comes out of these doors and does morning flag ceremony, as well as in the afternoon, they come out here, they do flag ceremony, and then they end their day. So, rightfully so, we're starting out here to show you guys what I've been up to for the last two years. Come on, let's take a walk inside. So for two years, I, I walked these halls. This is where I reported to duty. Uh, my duty was to instruct at the police academy. I instructed courses all the way from fundamentals of patrol to traffic crash investigation and was even a firearms instructor, still am. And for two years, this is where I used to sit. Yo. What's up? I'm what not even here, bro. Nothing. Just recording a video. Say hi. Oh. <laughs> This is our defensive tactics room. Uh, anytime we did any kind of defensive tactics or we were teaching the curriculum for defensive tactics, it would take place in here. We also use this room for scenarios. These guys right here, these are handcuff men. So we use these dummies when we're practicing handcuffing techniques or we're teaching the students uh, handcuffing techniques and then they'll progress and go through uh, and then actually do it on a human being. But when they begin and they start out, we use these guys right here. Answer. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. As you were. Yes, sir. So that's where I've been for the last two years. Now uh, I got a special treat for you guys. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I got a special treat for you guys coming up. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Just want to be on the vlog. They just want to be on the vlog. Good afternoon, sir. Afternoon, sir. Afternoon, I get it. Afternoon, sir. All right, so I got a special treat for you guys. But anyways, look, I stepped outside and they got some more training going on. We might as well vlog this too. Let's check it out. Take it all out here. The bleeder. The bleeder. Find the bleeder. There you go. There you go. Good job. Good job. Good job. Pack. What's going on here? What is this? Hey, how's it going? What's this is uh, tax tactical medicine training. Uh -huh. And we're getting the officers to understand wound packing and how to deal with severe bleeding. Uh, just getting repetitions in. The guys are putting in good work. Phenomenal guys putting in work. Fellas, take it easy. Guys, oh. Oh, you, you wait, 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 wait. Come on, get over here, get over here, get over here. There he is. You, look, I'm, I was just talking about that. I was in the academy yeah. teaching. Did I, did I instruct you yeah, at you one did. point? Yeah, you did. Okay, who was the best instructor you ever had? I can't say. Oh! I gotta work on my transitions. Costume change. Alright, so I got my tactical uh, plate carry on, my vest here with my first aid. I got a tourniquet, my first aid equipment here. We're gonna be doing some high speed stuff, guys. We're gonna be going out with the tactical robbery unit. So before I came to this unit, actually, the first time I came to this, before that, I was in a tactical robbery unit. Today, we're we'll gonna be riding with a familiar face on the vlog. You've seen him. If you're a day one subscriber, you know exactly who this person is and uh, this person has gone through the ranks and now is in command of the tactical robbery unit so without further ado here he comes Lieutenant Redondo! Oh, 
what's up? How's everything? Good, man. How's it going? I didn't know if it was you or some kind of soccer mom that was pulling up. No, I get that a lot. I get that a lot. I love the ride. I love the ride. It too. Yeah. So let's let's talk about what we doing. You want me to jump in? What do you want to do? Of course, bro. I got a seat for you. Okay. Right for you, like with, like the old days. Like bro. like the old days. All right. <sighs> Last time you were on the vlog, you were a sergeant. Yeah. In K9. It was a while ago, man. It was a while ago. Um, now, fast forward, you got promoted. Yes, sir. All right. Tell us a little bit about what you've been doing since the vlog. I got promoted, obviously, like yeah. you just said, and uh, did a couple, I went to a couple different units um, and, and administration and investigations. And now um, I'm in charge of the tactical robbery unit. One of my favorite units. I know. I know you got love for this Got lots of love for this unit. So. Uh, tell us a little bit about the ride, you know, and, and we've covered tactical robbery before. One one of the vlogs I used on the front cover, an orange uh, Dodge Charger, and it was like, sick car! And now it's like- Whose car was that, Burt? No, that was, I think that was Mikey's. Oh, okay. It was in Burt or Mikey's, I don't know. But yeah, it was an orange Dodge Charger, and now we're in a white minivan. Big difference. Yeah, things have changed. <laughs> things have changed, but you gotta adapt. Keep them guessing, huh? Yeah. So, to, an advantage of, of driving in this, you got a little bit of advantages? Uh, yeah, you know, I'm 38 years old, so it's hard for me to get out of a charger. <laughs> <laughs> That's the main advantage. <laughs> uh, so, it's easier for me to hop out of this little van right here. Yeah. But, uh, you know, obviously, you fit in the. Uh, you fit in the neighborhood and the residential areas a lot better than a charger that just sticks out. You know, everybody loves a charger. Especially an orange one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, I, I like this car a lot. I mean, I'm gonna have, obviously have to switch it out after this vlog comes out, but it's all good. So what's the point? Yeah, so this is, this is actually a lease or a rental, right? We have an agreement with a local rental company and we cycle through cars. What's the purpose behind that? Um, gives us a little bit more of an advantage. Uh, criminals are obviously looking for uh, our white and blues with the sirens on the top. So when they're looking for those police vehicles, you know, they might not see us um, obviously as quickly and we're able to, um, you know, go down areas or set up on vehicles a lot faster and a lot more efficiently than we would in a marked police vehicle. And, and it's it's really important, especially working in a high risk unit like this one, where you're stopping criminals that are armed, people that are wanted for homicide, robberies. And, and when we say robbery, not to be confused, these people have guns and they're putting it in other uh, victims' faces and they're taking their their um, items. They have no regards for the safety of the community that they live in or others that are out here. So uh, when stopping these types of individuals, you have to make sure you, that you're tactically sound. And one of, one of the reasons, one of the things is to keep them guessing, switching up on what cars that we're driving because we don't want to become a target out here. We go after uh, violent criminals, uh, felony vehicles, and um, this is our our bread and butter right here. We just go and saturate an area and look for these set vehicles again, in the hot sheets. And um, if they're hitting license plate readers or if there's a GPS track or whatever the case may be, this is what we usually come into contact with. A lot of these vehicles contain um, firearms, and you know, we this is the reason of the switching out cars and at least giving us a little bit of a of a buffer for us to have the, the edge on them. So technology has advanced, especially the way we're integrating it in the police department. So we have the real-time crime center that you guys work hand in hand with, correct? Yeah, we do. They're, they're awesome for us. Yeah, license plate readers now that are throughout the city. So things that are assisting you better in locating these wanted vehicles and wanted persons. So, of course, yeah, RTCC. The license plate readers, as we said, and even just uh, patrol officers, they give us information. Everybody plays a hand um, in the job we do, and you know, the investigations obviously that's a big part, giving us flyers and pictures of vehicles. Um, yeah, and we go out and look for them, try to find leads, and try to uh, get these vehicles off the street. All right, so what's coming over the air? One of the units, and they got PC on this car, right? One of the units got behind a possible homicide vehicle, 
haven't identified it. Yeah, I think all the things that we should go around, we haven't asked that this is the very one there. So, we got behind a vehicle to match the description. Well, the homicide that occurred, so they're behind it now, waiting for units to get to the area in order to take the traffic stop. The first green, we're still going to go east now. Still going up on approaching our 21st. The idea is to try to get the vehicle in a stop position when no in order to capture the vehicle without it moving in the attempt to flee. southbound from Northwest 7th Avenue and 36th Street. Um, got behind it to compare that compare the actual vehicle to the pictures and I confirmed that it was the car. So at that point, uh, you know, I radioed to my crew. We all got in the area. Once everybody was in the area, we took the vehicle down here. All right, so what's happening back here? Uh, the lieutenant and the sergeant are briefing or doing a debriefing of the situation that happened. So after every time they do a containment or a takedown, they kind of go over some of the things they could improve upon, what they did good, um, and just kind of debrief and give out any information that's pertinent uh, so they can then continue moving. So after everything, it's always good to talk about it because you learn, you continue learning and what you're doing, like a situation like this, you'll, you'll practice containment in a controlled area, in a controlled environment without other traffic and you try to get it or mimic that as, as close as possible and make the best possible situation out in real life. So they weren't taking any containment while the vehicle was moving. They were looking for an area that was less populated like is over here right now um, where they can stop the vehicle. I, I'm sure they passed a couple, because right now school's letting out, so they passed a couple school zones. So they moved into this area. If you see, it's like a side street in the back where the vehicle's traveling at a slow rate of speed and then they can catch it when it was stopping to do the vehicle takedown. So once they did the takedown, they had uh, enough officers in the area to do the takedown safely, and then they'd kind of just go over the positioning and what they could do better. I mean, it's it's the way you owe, it's the way you have to get better. You can't do one and say that was the best takedown ever. That was one, how do we get better? How do we get better? And uh, that's what they're doing back here. They're debriefing, so awesome job, guys. Back when I was in Drew, we had a thing called Hello. the hot sheet. You guys still have that? Or are you guys now like it's app technology? And uh, unfortunately, uh, things never change. Sometimes we have to go with what's hey! old and tried, sir. Yeah. So, if it ain't broke, yeah, there's no need to fix it. That's right. So, yep, there's a hot sheet. So, what's the hot sheet about? What is that? Um, basically, it's all our felony vehicles that are either active or fresh. Um, the front page is usually our violent crimes. Uh, the other pages that come after are usually the stolen vehicles. Our guys come in, um, you know, once we go into the office, they go and they start doing the hot sheet and whether vehicles are recovered, they take them off. If there's newer vehicles, they put them on. So. It's a big list, obviously. Sometimes we're behind vehicles and we'll ask, hey, do we have a bolo for this? And people reach for this to see if we do have a bolo uh, regarding a car we might be behind.
Yeah. LT. Uh, what was that? Um, it was a traffic stop reference uh, tense. Um, he had a firearm in his glove compartment, so we asked them to step out for our safety in there. Um, ran the gun, ran the license. Yeah, just try to switch to the other lane. Thanks, bro. Um, so obviously we ran everything, everything came back good. Obviously, I uh, told him how he should be carrying it because he doesn't have a permit. Um, and good to go. Just send them on their way and take And then, right here, uh, right in front of us, yeah. as you're responding. Right in front of us, uh, one of my officers took a stop. Uh, a gun with two extended magazines. He's running them, checking to see if he's good to go. Um, more than likely, he is. And. Uh, we just keep it moving. All right. Obviously, for tints as well, you can see that car is fully tinted out. Um, if they're in compliance, obviously we're not here to you know ticket them for um, for everything. So uh, we just let them go. Tell them they drive safely. Uh, yeah. Make them aware of the laws that they're more than likely aware of. But just keep it moving after that. Dark tints, everything checked out okay. Dark tints, tag cover. Tag cover, yep. Um, everything came back good, so. Back on the street. Let him go with a warning and heading out. Fox will be allowed to take an This vehicle fled from one of our canine officers a couple days ago on a traffic stop. And um, a hit, a felony hit was put out on the vehicle. So we found it through one of the license plate readers. And um, obviously, we were able to take it down here at 12 and 7 9, so let's go see what we got. officers picked them up today here uh, not too long ago so that's what we're looking at he's gonna be facing uh, some felony charges fleeing and eluding um, and then we're gonna continue on uh, moving on both occupants to step out the vehicle and at that time we saw a firearm underneath the passenger seat consistent of the direction where we heard it in. Uh, once, we step, uh, once we got both of them to step out we ran a, a, a search on the firearm and it came back stolen so we detained both occupants pending further investigation. At that point we ran the passenger as well and we noticed that he was a convicted felon. So at that point he was taken into custody depending for the investigation. LT, can I ask you a question? Yeah, go ahead. These guys have cool cars, they're doing good work. How does one become a tactical robbery team? Are they detectives? Yeah, they're detectives. There's a selection process. So when there's an opening, we put a official bulletin that goes throughout the agency. Um, people apply and then uh, there's tryouts. Tryouts consist of uh, a PT test, 
Uh, then we do like a little PT session, a run, um, a couple scenarios, simulation scenarios, and then uh, a little interview process. And then after that, we end up selecting uh, the person that's gonna come. So everybody's like, man, I wanna be a part of that tactical robbery. Well, first you got to become a police officer. Uh, do two years on the road, yeah. two year minimum, then you can apply. So, all right, let's see if you guys are future true members. Real quick, just break it down. Uh, all right, basically, I was traveling eastbound on 7 9th Street. Okay. I then uh, attempted to conduct a traffic stop here. The driver uh, ran the red light, quickly parked in here. As I uh, got close to the vehicle, I observed both the driver and the passenger switch seats. The driver that was driving switched over to the rear. The supposed driver. He was fidgeting uh, with his right hand. Seemed like he was trying to duck something inside the, the car seat. From there on, uh, backup arrived and we removed the uh, occupants from the vehicle. Due to the strong order of cannabis coming from the car, we uh, revealed a few uh, bags of cannabis. A few bags, like pillow pillowcases. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, so cocaine and oxycodone. Yeah. Found the magazine, but no gun. Both hands on the steering wheel, man. Both hands. Yo, Why do you both have hands on the steering wheel. Both hands on the steering wheel. Both hands on the steering wheel. Both hands on the steering wheel. Get out of the car. Get out of the car. Get out of the car. Keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. Get out of the ground. Get out of the ground. Get out of the ground.
Check the chips bag too, because he. Weed, just this pink bag here in the center closet. All right, so what's happening is uh, we had a subject who was acting very suspicious once we stopped him for a traffic stop. Um, he started running on us after we called him outside the vehicle, and then we got into a foot chase that lasted about a block, but all throughout the foot chase, we were aware that he kept grabbing onto his waistband. It looked like he was trying to get either retrieve something, maybe a firearm, pull it out and toss it. So now we're doing a walk um, and find out where exactly. We're just re kind of go through where he was going and see if we can locate a firearm. Guy had, he was holding on something tight. Yeah, he was holding on like he had a gun. I thought he was gonna pull out, bro. All right, so what's going on is, um, since there was so much narcotics in the car, um, he had time he might have ingested something. Uh, maybe when he was getting pulled over, he was sweating profusely when we were talking to him, um, trying to just find out what's going on. At one point, we asked him to get out of the car, he refused, and then he took off running. So in that time, he might have ingested something, so fire rescue's here checking him out. Um, he's heaving like he's trying to throw something up. So it could be that he ingested drugs. There was uh, a lot of narcotics found inside the vehicle. So fire rescue checking them out and kind of following protocol. LT, what do we got? All right, so we stopped the car, um, reference tints. Uh, the guy was super nervous from the beginning of the traffic stop. Um, fidgeting, moving, wouldn't keep his hands uh, where he told him to place it. Um, asked him to step out of the vehicle because just his uh, his nervousness was making me nervous so I was like something's going on with this guy he basically he said no and he's like no I'm not putting it up he put his uh, window up and then he started reaching down so we thought it was that this guy's armed and this is gonna go down into a shooting yeah, so we all drew on him um, we gave him verbal commands uh, try to break the window <laughs> Um, finally kind of complied where he put his windows down and then you know he said okay I'm coming out as soon as you open the door again because we're fearing that this guy was possibly reaching for a gun uh, you know we, we gave him space obviously so he opens the door steps out and then it's off to the races um, yeah. ran down the block uh, about two blocks and he was clutching his uh his waistband the whole time by the time we made it down two blocks you know took him into custody um inventory of the car is a lot of cocaine from when we saw real quick we got to do a more thorough search um there's a lot of cocaine in the center console um he is also a convicted felon and um go clear up the car finish it up we got canine coming to, a, to do an article search um possibly for a gun and any more narcotics that was thrown out and uh, to finish it up over here at the car. So right now, canine officers running the dog Dogs, uh, multi-purpose dogs, trained also to find uh, firearms. So right now, it is uh, it's doing the job. Canines doing their job. Okay. So I don't think he had anything. He, he touched on a couple things, but it was... Yeah, like the only thing was that bush, but there was a water bottle in there. They, yeah. The guys were probably drinking on the porch, dude, in there. Yeah, okay. But that was the only thing that, that he was really alerted to. All right, appreciate it. LT, yes, sir. like the old days, like the old days. And, and before we wrap it up, because this is something I know we're going to get asked a lot, because we mentioned that we, you guys are in rentals, like a rental agreement, and you're swapping out cars. Yeah. So to, what about your lights? Like the way you, you guys all have lights installed? You have to do that every time you get a rental? Like what, um, what's up with that? Basically, we got a, a, a light and siren kit. I can show you real quick. Okay. Um, and when we switch out the rentals, it takes like 10, 15 minutes to, 
take them off and set them up into the new uh, the new vehicle. As you can see, that's the that's the handheld that holds the PA, all the sirens to light up, uh, also to turn on the lights. And um, right here is the kit. Everything runs off of that. The wires go to the sides, the back, and the front, and basically. Just take everything off, put it in the kit, move it to a new car, set everything back up, and it's good to go off the cigarette lighter. Until we meet again, sir. Thank you. You guys, you guys did a great job tonight. So with that being said, we're gonna sign off. If you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe. Follow us on TikTok, Instagram, and let's do the sign off, shall we? Don't forget to like. <laughs> subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you on the next one. We're out. Adios. I thought it was a boost to see light.